Hey class, it's Nick. I got a tutorial for you today that's about how to reduce the uh, file size of your PDFs. I've um, been noticing in a lot of assignments that um, there are a lot of really large files submitted. <laughs> um, when you're sending materials to other people, like you're sending them to clients to review or to like to like a contractor or um, or you know like a fabricator, you really want to try to manage the file size. Um, you know, there's a limit to what you can attach to an email. Usually, it's about 20 megabytes. Um, anything over that, you you know, you know, you're gonna have to ha have to find another way to transmit it um, electronically, either through Dropbox or through some other format, um, and that can become kind of difficult. Um, it's good courtesy to keep the size of your files down so that um, they they like transmit fast. They don't take up a lot of space, uh, and they're still easy to read. Uh, and uh, balancing that um, can be kind of a challenge. So I want to talk about a couple of different methods for that. So you can send files that are small but are still um, good looking. And the format that we use for submissions for this class and the format that a lot of people like to use is PDF. Uh, and PDF stands for Portable Document Format. It's an Adobe uh, file format. Since you guys have Adobe um, on your computers, you have the ability to print to um, to like a PDF format from a lot of your applications. Um, you can just select it as a printer or you can just save it as that file type. So it's really, um, it's really convenient because what, what PDF does is that it ensures that the document looks the same on any machine that's looking at it in, um, inside of a PDF, uh, um, inside of a PDF, you know, like viewer, um, It'll keep the fonts and the formatting and everything exactly the same, no matter what machine you're looking at it on. So that, that's why a lot of people like to use it. And it's generally a small uh, file format uh, because Adobe's like optimized it for viewing text and for viewing images and like that sort of thing. So PDF, that's why, that's, that's why PDFs are the recognized um, standard for a lot of professionals for the way that they transmit documents. Um, and that's why we use it for this class. So what I've seen though, and I've got a couple examples on my desktop here. I have a lab that someone submitted that was um, was was 135 megabytes. Again, well over uh, the like 20 megabytes um, that that is going to be the limit for an email. It'll take a long time to upload, uh, even on Blackboard, even on even on campus. It's going to take a long time to upload, um, and that takes a lot of time away from you. The other one I have is a is a Photoshop file that someone submitted um, that wasn't a PDF file, um, but look at this. It's a one gigabyte. Uh, Photoshop file and that first of all it's not the right format second of all it's just enormous uh, that's that's a that's just way too big to be sending something um, that's only going to be looked at for grading it's something that that's only going to be reviewed it's not a final something that's going to be printed very large um, so it's just not really um, acceptable and I'm using two student examples but I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to mention names or anything and I'm not I'm not trying to call anybody out these are just two good examples of very large files and I'm going to show you today how to make those files um, a lot smaller so let's go right to it so the first one I've got is actually this uh, this sort of photograph submission it's a nine page PDF of some nice photos of cat hall and these are really, you know, high quality photos. If I if I zoom in, you can see like I get a lot of detail in that image, um, and that's good. But really, you know, all I'm all I'm really looking at is, uh, you know, if I'm going to be one of the graders or I just want to look at the image, and I can look at it fine at this at this scale. I'm not really zooming in. I'm not going to print it. I'm going to look at it um, electronically. You always have to consider your audience when you're thinking about what kind of file to send, what kind of type, what kind of size it should be. Um, and in this case, again, since it's for grading, you know, I think the 20 megabyte limit is a really good ceiling. Now, 20 megabytes is, is like a limit. I mean, you could certainly make it a lot smaller. As long as it's legible to the person viewing it, um, it's perfectly fine. Um, so I've got this file. And, um, and actually, uh, I just realized I had the wrong, uh, wrong file open. So if I go back and I, and I open this one up, I mean, you can really see the detail you know, in these images here. Okay. Um, so there we go. So we've got this file. It's 135 megabytes, so too big. So what you can do immediately, so this was created, probably a bunch of JPEGs got created as a PDF. That's fine. Um, if this was you, you could go into Acrobat, and this is Acrobat, not um, Acrobat Reader. 
I want to be really clear about that. So if you hit open with, you'd say Acrobat Pro. Okay. Reader can't do much. It just opens them up and it looks at them. Pro, the stuff you guys pay for, um, will actually do this. So open it up with Pro. Go to File, go to Save As Other. And what I like to do, there's two different methods and they, they sometimes come out the same, sometimes they don't. So I'll teach you both of them to you. Um, go to File, Save As Other, Reduced Size PDF. And there's all kinds of versions of Acrobat. Right now we're on Acrobat, um, I believe we're on Acrobat version 11, but it's always saving it to the, to the one previous. I would go ahead at this point, this is 2015 right now as of this video, um, I would go back to Acrobat 9. I would go maybe two versions back. You never want to kind of trust that your client or somebody has, has, has definitely upgraded their software, um, but you can be reasonably safe. Like I wouldn't go all the way back to these old versions. The reason being is that Acrobat with each new version um, gets a little bit more optimized. It gets a little bit better at reducing that file size. And so the higher up you go, the smaller your file is going to be and the, and, and the better the images are going to be. Um, but you don't want to go all the way to the newest version because you're, the person looking at it might not have upgraded. In my case, I have, but I would still go ahead and save it to Acrobat 9 or even Acrobat 8. But I'm going to do Acrobat 9. And that's really all you have to do. So I just say reduce file size, say OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and, and I'll call this um, reduced. And it's going to crunch for a bit. And, you know, depending upon the size of the image and the number of images in your file, you know, it might take, it might take a few minutes, but this, in this case, it takes a few seconds. And it'll throw you this warning about uh, image mass being down sampled. It doesn't really matter. Just say OK. All right, so... What have we got? So if we look at this thing, I would say it looks pretty It looks pretty similar, but if we look at the uh, file size, we've gone from 135 megabytes to 1.5 megabytes. So that's a huge savings. What have we lost? Well, let's take a look at it. So if I got my image here, go ahead and look at this one, look at that one. I don't see a huge difference at this scale, okay? but. I will show you uh, what the difference is. If, especially if we go and we look at, oops, I'm trying to zoom in here, but it didn't like me, okay. Let's say go to zoom, marquee zoom, yeah. If we're looking at the image, you know, here, as it zoomed in, and we look at the image here, you can see what's happening. You can see that, that the edge of this is kind of blurred into the sky, and you can see here the image is still still fairly crisp. So we're losing a lot of resolution. Um, there are there are fewer pixels per inch. You can see you can see the texture here doesn't show up. You know doesn't show up quite as well. We're at twelve hundred percent. You know we're at we're at eight hundred percent. It's pretty pretty zoomed in. It's pretty uh, it's 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 zoomed in quite quite far to make it apples to apples here, or at least as close as I can get it. Yeah. So, yeah, you do lose some information. But again, we're looking at it electronically. We are not going to print this. And, I mean, unless you really zoom in, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, let's look at some of the other images here. The biggest one, I think, are these two images. And I'm actually going to rotate these views because... Um, they, you really can't look at them sideways. I, if you should really submit your things all rotated, it makes it makes it a lot easier. Uh, like you don't want to accidentally, uh, well, you, like you don't want to send it to the client and have them have to rotate it. It's different if they're going to print it, but if we're looking at it on a screen, it's courteous to uh, to uh, rotate. Now, these images are definitely different, though. There's a little bit. This image is. I zoomed out too far. This image is a little bit blurry, if I'm being honest. You, you can you can tell, but I am able to kind of see what's in the image, and um, and to see the composition. And this is one of these things where you know actually seeing the the two things side by side you know makes a difference. I mean, this has really really been um, changed. So let's see, four hundred percent. And 400%. Big difference. We'll talk about how to fix that, like you know, you know, in a bit. But but the way you know, so just just be be careful. Just because you um, 
you um, do reduce file size, you know, doesn't mean that it's it's gonna you know like magically make it smaller. And you're not gonna lose anything. So you really want to verify your different images. Um, what you might what you might do is you know you can make a PDF and then you can take that page and I've actually rotated my view um, back. If you want to rotate, oops, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Just keep going here. Um, if you really want to rotate an image in your PDF, let's go back one. You want to go to pages, rotate, and then you can you can only you want to just want to rotate this page two to two. And now I've rotated that page, but I haven't rotated anything else. Okay, so you don't really want to fix that before you you know fix that before you submit. Um, what I would do is I would maybe take this page out. And then you could you could resample this image and then put that page in and it would increase the file size, but it's not gonna be quite as bad as what we saw. Because that, that that image that we just saw was pretty um, was pretty reduced. Okay. So let's look at the rest of these images really quick before we go on, just so that we, we can kind of see the difference. These look pretty crisp to me. Yeah, so I wouldn't have a problem. The only one I have a problem with would be that image. You always want to review your stuff before before you submit it. Okay, so the other one that we've got, and I'm actually going to go ahead and um, fix this image like I did the other one. So go to my tools. I'm in pages here. Rotate counterclockwise, page two. Um, the other thing you could do is you can go save as other and you can say optimize PDF. And here you can really, really change a lot of stuff. So you, you, you can go in and you can say, okay, down sample um, the image to like 150 you know, points per inch for anything that's above 225. And these might be 300 points per inch. And so that's going to reduce it by half. JPEG compression, you could say like, well, I want to use the maximum compression, you know, which is going to, which is going to, I'm sorry, the maximum quality. So it's going to be a larger image, but it's going to be higher, um, but it's going to be higher quality. And um, let's go ahead and actually experiment with this. Make compatible with an Acrobat 9, that's fine. Um, and this is checked, so optimize only if there's a reduction. So it's only, it's only going to help, um, it, it's only going to reduce it if it helps. And let's just go ahead and run this and see what we get. So our, our original image, uh, our file is 135 megabytes. Let's call this one uh, optimized max. Let's let it crunch for a second. Let's see what we get. Okay, same same warning as before. Sometimes when you're looking at these images, uh, or you're looking at the file, it's not the original. Uh, it doesn't actually update it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. And open. Um, so we got 3.5 megabytes instead of 1.5 megabytes. Um, so let's open up the optimized one. Oops, I'm trying to get there. We go. Okay, the optimized one, and let's open up the original one. And we'll go to page two again. So here we go. Let's see if we can see kind of apples to apples here. And that doesn't look bad, you know. Like, um, let's go ahead and zoom in, 400% again. I lost my thing. Here we go. All right. So you know, a little bit blurrier, but let's maybe do 300%. But I think I think it's better than the other, than the other image. It's definitely not as crisp as. Uh, as this is, but I think it's an improvement. Let's go ahead and open up this uh, this reduced one and see what we get. We'll fix this. Rotate clockwise, counterclockwise. Okay. Yeah, so it's an improvement. I wouldn't say it's dramatic, but it's certainly better. And this is again it zoomed at 300. Look especially at this um, at this piece of the roof, how it's almost like obliterated 
in this image. You lose the kind of line of this, but you get it back here. So, I mean, I think, you know, if we're looking at this thing, and again, like, if I'm, if I'm reviewing a lot of these, I'm not going to be zooming in. Yeah, I mean, definitely see this a lot better than that. It's not, you know, this image. But it's pretty good. And the main idea of it is that, you know, again, you're going from 135 megabytes, you know, to 3 megabytes. I mean, that's a, that's a tremendous uh, savings. You're losing a little bit of the image, but it's not, uh, it's not bad. So depending upon what you're submitting, you do want to maybe, like you want to experiment with those two different methods. Um, you know, like the reduced method is just a single like option. You know, you just, you just say file, uh, save, you know, and then, and then you just go, you know, and, and then the only thing you have to change is the kind of uh, PDF file. The uh, optimized PDF gives you more options, and it looks like it can it can really help you, you know, make a little bit better image um, than the reduced method. So those are two options you should try. You should view the files before you submit them to make sure that you're not losing any important details, and that you're not you're not just sending like a bunch of really fuzzy, you know, kind of stuff, because um, then your TA or I might uh, might ask for like a better file, right? So you want to you try to balance file size with, um, with a quality, but you don't want to just submit a raw PDF that's been generated from those images, okay? Okay, let's look at this Photoshop file. So I have a one gigabyte Photoshop file. And so like if you took this Photoshop file and made it a PDF by just saying, okay, I'm gonna save this as a PDF. And you're gonna, I'm gonna turn off layers here. Oh, yeah. So it's going to crunch for a bit. Let's make it Acrobat 9. I would save it with thumbnails, and but I wouldn't preserve the Photoshop. We're not going to edit it in Photoshop ever. What we're going to do is we're going to look at it on a computer. So we say save. Save, save, save. Okay, so it was a gigabyte. And the PDF of it, let's see. PDF of that is 5 megabytes. Okay, if we save it as a PDF. Okay, so that's not too bad. Let's um, let's take a look at it. And there you go. So and then this is yeah. So if we, even if we zoom in, you know the quality is still reasonably reasonably high. Okay, so you want to if you export out of e even this like this giant you know PDF. Sorry, this this giant Photoshop file really gets a big reduction in size, and that that would be a sufficient um, file for any any kind of submission. Um, the difficulty with it is, if you look at this, is that like from from the um, from the image we've got this this uh, Photoshop file. If you go to um, image size, look at this image. It's 300 DPI or 300 pixels per centimeter, I guess, but basically basically you know like 300 uh, dots. Um, and look at the number of pixels here. This is a giant image. It's 24 by like 25. Um, it's a lot of pixels. 300 DPI gets thrown around a lot because it's um, what a lot of people say that that you want to that you want to print things to um, because that's what most printers are set to. That's a very very high resolution. Um, what's nice about that is that you know if you zoom into it, we're at five percent by the way. If you keep zooming in, yeah, you know, it's just a ton of detail, you know, in this uh, bitmap image. I mean, we're we're at like five hundred percent, and you're barely distinguishing, you know, between one kind of edge of something and another. Like this is just a extremely extremely high resolution. Um, but you know, is it really necessary? Um, if you go back to image size. What's a PDF? Well, a PDF is usually 11 by 17 or it's eight and a half by 11, you know? So like, even if we went, let's say we were gonna print this thing. Um, if we said, um, okay, so it's going to be, excuse me, 11 inches by 11 inches at 300 dpi, now it's actually 215 megabytes. And I'm processing it. Okay, go back in. You tell me the difference, right? If we're viewing it on a screen, it's not really 
any different, right? And even I mean, this is this would still be sufficient for printing. It's it's a giant it's a giant file. Um, but let's go let's go a step further. I mean, what's visible on the screen, right? Is is has generally been accepted as 72 DPI. Some of the high resolution monitors, like my Retina display that I have here, um, is 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 much higher. Um, but there's a difference between what can be seen on the monitor and what the human eye can see. And what the human eye can see is generally, I mean, you can, let's try 72 DPI. So if we do 72 DPI at 11 by 11, and we go to, you know, that says it's going to be 12 megabytes. We also want to check the resample box. I forgot this. You actually, if you're going to reduce it, you want to make sure you're using the bicubic sharper um, because that's for reduction. Okay, and that's gonna that's an algorithm that's gonna help me make the image look better when it's uh, shrunk. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. Eleven by eleven at seventy two DPI. Once again, looking at it, I don't really see the difference, right? But now we're at fifty percent. So if we zoom in, it's still fine, right? And if we make a PDF out of that image, let's just go ahead and say save Photoshop PDF. 72 dpi get rid of that uh, 8 we've gone from 5 megabytes to 2 megabytes and realistically we're not seeing a whole lot of difference here this is perfectly suitable for sending someone an email to say hey like what do you like think about this or to send uh, on or, or to put onto blackboard so that we can grade it 5 megabytes Two megabytes, much easier to transfer, much easier to load, um, and you're not really losing a lot of quality. Okay, versus a gigabyte, versus the raw one gigabyte, you know, giant file. Um, this is a pretty extreme example, but I just want to show you're not really losing anything. Okay, like if you're really if you're really trying to compare these things to each other, it, it's not it's not that it's not that big of a loss. So, when you're in Photoshop and when you're looking at your images, you're definitely looking at you know, if you go to image size, how many pixels are there? You know how big a screen is, you know, right? For the most, most of them are, 12, are like 1600 by 1200 or like a retina, I think is like 3000 something by 2000 something. I mean, so if you got an image that basically fills up your screen, um, then you know that that's a pretty decent size image for, at least for like a PDF. And this would probably print just fine too. Um, it's really not that, really not that bad. Um, so changing the size to something that's more PDF friendly, like in terms of the, the width and the height, and then reducing the resolution to, you know, like 72. And I actually used, this was set up for centimeters, but we can do pixels per inch. Um, and I've actually, this is probably not a fair comparison because I think I was actually looking at it in centimeters, which is different. Um, that's my mistake. But if you look at it at 72 DPI, let's actually, let's actually drop it even down to 72. And see, at 72 DPI, like we are now at 100%. Like we are, we are fully, this is it without any zoom. And you'll notice though, that as we, as we begin to zoom, we do start to lose some information in the objects, you know, here, right? So yeah, I guess I was wrong before. Um, at 72 DPI, I mean, it looks, it looks fine at hundred percent. looks absolutely fine. This is what your monitors uh, made, made to look at. Um, if you zoomed in on it, you do lose a little bit of detail. So you might consider walking it back and saying, okay, so instead of um, 72 DPI, 150, right? About twice that, which isn't bad, or 100 DPI, okay? 100's not bad, let's do 100. You can see 100 is a little bit, a little bit better when you start to zoom in. You know, or again, like we like we had, let's do we do 150, which isn't much different than what we had before. So you can still you can still zoom in a little bit, and this guy doesn't get too doesn't get too pixely. Um, if, let's just make a let's make a PDF of that. Actually, uh, so we'll call this 150. This is 150 dots per inch. I think this file was set up with a like a European computer before, so it was set in metric, but. Um, still accurate okay so 2.6 meg uh, so so half the size of that okay um this is actually not quite this is not quite the same um so if we go back let's just see what a 
72 DPI one looks like. So 72 DPI, save as, we'll call this 72 DPI true. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, okay, so the actual 72 DPI one is only like 900 kilobytes. It's very small. But look at, you know, perfectly reasonable. See the differences are very, very subtle. And on this video, you might not, not even be able to tell. The difference is when you zoom in, and there would be some difference when you like print it. I mean, if you're sending someone a file to print, you probably want to go with a little bit higher DPI, like the 150 DPI, but send it at the size that you think it's going to be printed at. So if it's 11 by 17, or if it's eight and a half by 11, you know, or if it's 36 by, by 24, you want to manage that. 150 DPI will print for most people just fine. Um, depends on the resolution of your printer, but it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be that bad. Okay, one more uh, thing. Um, Illustrator files are a special case, right? If you've got something that's pure vector, right? Um, like our Bauhaus elevation. If you look at this uh, Illustrator file, it is 152 kilobytes, okay? Um, that's because remember, like um, when you're dealing with, uh, with things like that are vector-based, like things in Illustrator, things in AutoCAD, they're mathematically generated. There aren't any images in this particular uh, file. Um, if you add textures in it or something from, um, from a Photoshop or from a JPEG, that would change things. But the idea of a, um, of a vector file is, is that, you know, if I zoom in, especially look at the edge of this thing, like the more, it, you know, that doesn't get any pixely or uh, more or less pixely, it's always, it's always perfect, right? Whereas if I zoomed in on this guy's head, you know, it's gonna be pixelier and pixelier. And this is a special case for PDFs because again, PDFs are an Adobe format. If I go in and I save my um, file as a PDF, again, let's check the settings here. Optimize for fast view. Uh, let's see here, about 62 kilobytes. And if I open it up, there is functionally no difference between this. And the more I zoom in, you know, again, it's just perfect. Like the more I'm at 1200, you know, I can, I can keep zooming. Nothing's gonna change. And that's why vector formats are great, right? Because you can, you can zoom into them and zoom out infinitely and they're gonna look great um, at any scale. And because they're mathematically generated, they're an extremely small uh, file format. So. Even sending the PDF of an Illustrator file can save you, can save you some uh, memory. Um, that they can save you some space. Uh, if you're sending things that have images in them again, things that you've like, like your photo collage or whatever, um, you may you may have a larger file size, but you should still run into some of these ideas of of um, of optimizing it or reducing the file, and that should help you make a smaller file. So again. Look for the 20 megabyte uh, ceiling. You know, don't don't send any files anymore that are not PDFs and that are not larger than 20 megabytes. Uh, we won't look at them. You've really got to learn how to optimize these things, and you've got to have some judgment about it. It's not just as simple as just as just a few settings. You've, you've really got to understand what the losses are in the file. If if it's not if it doesn't look right, you may have to adjust the um, the DPI of the image. You may have to edit individual photographs um, in a set that you're sending. You've really got to be uh, mindful and have some craft about how you do this. Um, but if you're successful, you know, you can transmit a file that is very small, but still has the legibility, you know, that you need to get the feedback um, that you need from somebody. Okay, that's it. Hope you guys uh, learned something. I'll uh, see you guys in class.